Kiddos, guess who we're meeting today? Santa Claus. I know him. See, look, he's right here. Santa Claus. I got my gingerbread coffee this morning. It's pretty delicious. Delicious? Delicious. <laughs> what a great way to start. Seriously though, I've got style. There's no denying it. Once we get this day started, we're actually gonna go to the mall because that's where my buddy Santa Claus is at. And in that mall is also the Lego store. I wanna check out the pad wall because last time I was there, they had one by two white slopes and I pretty much used all of them on the Winter Village recently, so I need some more. So the other reason I wanna to go to the mall, other than meeting up with Santa, of course, is because I want to return this camera not because it's not any good, but I actually want to get the uh, better version of it. So this is just the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. You just get the camera. But they also have like this one called the Creator Kit, I think it is. And it comes with like a little tripod, an additional lens, and also a wireless mic that transmits wirelessly to this camera. So I didn't get that one originally because it wasn't available anywhere in my city here. Like nobody had it in stock. But it is available online, and luckily for me, London Drugs, the place where I bought this, has a 14-day return policy, so I packaged it back up essentially exactly how it was when I originally got it. I'm going to return it, and I already have the better camera, well, like the better package on order from DJI directly. One thing I will say, though, is when I make that return, I sort of feel bad. Like, I'm not breaking any rules because... When I checked out at London Drugs, I specifically asked the salesperson, like, what's your return policy? He said, no problem. As long as all the original packaging's like intact and everything's 100% working, then we can re return it for up to 14 days. So like, that's one of the sales pitches where I was like, okay, well, then I'm, I'm for sure gonna try it out. That's, that's a great return policy. I, I'm gonna try it. So I, I, I'm not doing anything wrong, but I feel like it's not 100% ethical. But with that said, the Creator Combo, that's the, the new camera that I want to get with all the accessories, isn't available anywhere in store, in my city, or online. So what am I going to do, right? Like, if London Drugs had that product in, in stock online or in their store, then I would get it from them. But they don't. And I want it. So I, I'm not really abusing the system, but for some reason, like... Mentally, I sort of feel like I am, and I shouldn't be doing it, but I'm not breaking any rules. You know, no laws were broken, right? I, I don't think so, so I think it's all right. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, Winter Village, I am finishing it today, which is exciting. I want to go see if they have any more of those slopes because I used so many slopes on this the other day, as you already saw, I, I already finished this project. But right now in this video, it's funny, at the time of filming, it's not even finished, like Santa Claus is laying there, and these trees haven't been installed yet, and a whole bunch of things haven't been taken care of, plus there's no, like, signage. So yeah, that's what I'm going to try and work on today, is finishing this video. But first, we've got to go meet up with Santa. So I'm doing this, but in real life. If you guys throw any more food on the floor, you're going to be, you're going to be on the naughty list. Eat your bread, eat your toast, get your finger out of your nose. That was pretty rude. Dad just picked those up. There. It's pretty rude. You just want more peaches? Are you like Bowser? Are you like Bowser? Peaches, 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 peaches. I'll make you mine. Right, Benjamin? Here, give your sister some peaches. Yeah, you just want peaches. Yeah, okay. You can have more peaches. Benjamin. Is ready? Whoa. They did not like that. <laughs> So I just finished returning that camera. It turns out DJI products are not returnable, so don't do what I did. But luckily for me, the guy didn't specify that, and I got away with it, I guess. But I sort of feel bad for London Drugs. Sorry, guys, I love you. I 
spend a lot of money with you. I don't actually love you, but you know what I mean. Uh-oh, kids. Now we're going to the Lego store. I came here to get white slopes, and it looks like we're gonna get lucky because they got a whole bin full of them. Also, I discovered the other day that I need some of these. So we didn't take my car, which has my cups in it, and I was like, oh my gosh, they're out of large cups. They only have small cups. Introducing the pick and build box. Interesting. So I think this is gonna be very good for stacking because it's a rectangle rather than a circular cup. But for slopes, there's not really a way to stack them. I'm just gonna jam them in there. And for one by four plate, it's gonna do the exact same thing. Could you imagine if you decided to take the time to stack those though? You would fit so many in a box. I just don't have time today, I got the kids, but you would fit like so many more in a box. I feel like you could actually stack one by four plates in a crazy way. But who's got time for that? Like that would take a long time, man. It's crazy. But the boxes, so they retail for 20 bucks, sort of the cups, but you can't refill the boxes. But if you bring your cups back, they still honor that refill price, which is, I think, $19.50 rather than $20. Melee, we got two boxes. Benjamin, hey, we got two boxes, bro. That's it. Now we're out of here. Not only do we get these fancy boxes, but we also get fancy stickers to seal them. I was like, there's scotch tape right there. He's like, no, no, I gotta find the stickers. I was like, there's scotch tape. No, gotta use the special sticker. So I'm excited to get home and empty these pieces into a large cup and see if these actually do fit more. I'm sure if you took the time to stack them, you could fit a lot in there. It just depends on how much time you wanna spend. I could see myself stacking brick and larger plates, but definitely not one by four place that would take forever where are we going Millie <laughs> just doing a little bit of mall walking Going to the cowboy store? <laughs> Is that a pretty reindeer, Millie? Ooh. So who's ready to test the theory? Now, I didn't like overload this pad box. It was just like to the top. I didn't want to, you know, overdo it. So it's just a standard pick and build box. Let's see. Oh, looks like you can fit more maybe, right? Because I spilled a bunch on the floor. Okay, what about the white slopes though? Perfect. So I don't even have to do any more research to know that I much prefer the boxes. The boxes are way better because look, they fit the same amount of pieces. My green box must have had like a slight bulge to it because that's why it's overflowing a little bit. But look, the slope's pretty much the exact same. And imagine how easy these are gonna be to pack compared to a cup. I mean, I've packed a lot of pap cups. I think I even have a drawer with some examples of packed pap cups. Yeah, this one right here. Okay, so all these plates were packed into a pap cup. Look how easy it would be to pack these four by six plates into that cup. It would save me so much time. Like. That is awesome. And look at that, oh, it's not quite, what is that, four, eight, 12 studs, but maybe you could get away with it. But you know what I mean? Like it's gonna be so much easier to pack these. Therefore, they are way better. Like that is sweet, right? Yeah, that's cool. I'm not gonna pack these types of parts because you'll be there all bloody day and it's not worth your time. But for like big plates or big bricks or two by four bricks or one by three bricks, one by two bricks even, you betcha, I'll be packing them into boxes like this, way better. And you know what, that actually makes me happy because it's less plastic waste as well. Think about how many cups they've produced and how many cups have got recycled or thrown away. The cardboard is just better because it's more recyclable, right? It's not a single use plastic, which Lego is trying to get away from. In fact, I was building the Lego dream sets the other day and they started to roll out the paper bags. The paper bags were in the Lego dream sets. 
So that's pretty cool. Those are coming out on January 1st, I think. Yeah, so there's paper bags in those products and that's, that's pretty neat, right? And the CMFs, yeah, they're in cardboard boxes too, but that's their initiative to get rid of single-use plastics and that's why they're now in the cardboard boxes. So there we go, PAB boxes, in my opinion, are way better than PAB cups because you don't have to deal with that weird shape. Sure, it was fun jamming one by two bricks in the PAB cup and creating layers and trying to fit as many as you possibly can in there, but it took forever. I think it took me like half an hour, maybe even more to pack one by two bricks into the cup. And by the end of it, you're like, I don't even feel like doing this anymore. Like it's just a waste of my time. By the time you put half an hour in it or into the process, it's, it's not really worth it, right? But yeah, I think these pad boxes are pretty cool, everybody. That's uh, my thoughts on them, at least. These are a win. So I'm actually working on the Winter Village today, and my printer was experiencing problems. That's supposed to be a green circle, and that's supposed to be a blue square, right? That doesn't look like those things. But I'm creating the uh, signage for the ski hill. Obviously, it's not going to be that big. I was just trying to figure out what's going on with my printer. And I just did a power clean on it. But now it's not going to be ready for 12 hours. So I've got to postpone that for 12 hours. I'm going to try and print another one just to see if it works. Hey, Jose, you want to hit print for me on that document if it's still open? Please. I'm going to see if it improves. Oh, it's printing something right now. Oh, I should have kept it rolling. Look, it did work. Nice. Sweet. I had to do a power clean. There we go. Now I can print my stickers for uh, the ski hill. I'm pretty excited about that. Look at the, the names. Steep Bricks. Old Road. It's going to be pretty sweet. Don't mind our messy pantry. I just wanted to show you something here. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, there's barely anything in that one, but there's a sugar cookie. Christmas bacon. <laughs> it's time to eat one of those. And uh, probably a coffee as well. That would go really nice with that. I'm going to go with the nougat. So I whipped these all up on Photoshop and now I'm about to print them on a label sheet and that should turn out quite nicely. Like check that out, right? Yeah. And that's the size of a two by four tile because on Photoshop I can make it to the millimeter dimension and then those will fit on two by four tiles, that'll fit on a two by two tile, that should be a two by three tile. Pretty sweet signage, right? Oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do is actually packing tape over top of these right and then cut them out the packing tape is going to give it like a sticker style gloss i know ghetto fabulous that's for sure i've done my part it's time to do yours mm -hmm. i mean jose is going to create the stickers because she's more crafty than me oh that's why you are more crafty. really good at cutting things out yeah, you're really good at cutting things out really good at it one day I'd like to improve that process. I think it'd be cool to have some sort of sticker printer. I'm not sure if a cricket could handle that, but I did the same thing for the zoo, right? And I think they turned out all right. Look, there's Black Panther, Panda, monkeys over there. I think the signage just sort of adds that awesome little detail. And it's gonna do the exact same thing to the ski hill. I forgot to add the border, but no, they wouldn't have borders like on the ski hill, I don't think it'd be borderless, but I decided to add the border to uh, the ones here in the zoo, but it does provide a nice cut line. Whew. She's doing a great job. Hey, everybody. Look at those funny signs. Burp cliffs, hell's kitchen, brick slopes, steep bricks, stud run, the brick board park, caution. And then over here, there's the ski boundary ones going on two by three tiles. Good job, Jose. Kids awake yet? They're sleeping like babies. Tuckered out from Santa. Hey, Millie, is that your book? You reading? Is that a pink towel? A black car? You learning about colors? Nice. Benjamin, how you doing, buddy? Mama's making tacos. It's not even Tuesday, and we're having tacos. 
So after getting all the signs installed and having a delicious taco dinner, I finished reviewing my Winter Village for 2023. Then I was standing here and I was looking at it and I was like, oh man, that is a cool angle. What if I zoom out too? Look at that Winter Village. Isn't that cool? It's actually like pretty big. Usually when I'm like filming, I'm like, yeah, we got the ski slope here and then we got this over here and then we've got the modular buildings, do, 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 the skating rink and this and that. But then you don't actually like see the full size of it. Like from here you do and from the angle where we started this clip you do. And I just think it's so cool. It looks neat when you like sort of stand from afar. With that said, it would be way better if this was one giant winter village. Like, you know, if, if this wasn't so long, if it was more like rectangular and it had more depth and I could actually put a road in and actually do some more things like that. But given the space that I like have for this project i think i was able to utilize it quite well right huh pretty happy with that you know you come down the stairs you're like oh yeah ski hill winter village very cool yeah oh beach and also huge city yeah and then you're like okay got some cool sets and stuff bam let's start building love it I just want to talk a little bit more about video quality and cameras as well. So the new camera that I have on order, which is the new but the old camera just with the updated creator combo package. These kids are sure having a lot of fun up there. Uh, it's going to arrive hopefully before Christmas, like the 23rd, so then I can start to use that camera again. So when I use that camera to film the uh, 2023 Lego Collection Overview, where I went over every single Lego set in this Lego room from 2023, I decided to film it in 4K. <clears throat> and it was a 38 minute video, but there was probably an hour of footage. Probably more than that. I might've messed up more than 22 minutes. Probably did. Either way, let's call it that. I was shocked because everything took so long in 4K, it is crazy. The files are monstrous. So transferring the files from the camera to the computer took forever. Then also for some reason on the editing software that I'm like really good at using, it's Adobe Premiere Elements. It, it just does not handle 4K well. I've tried Googling it, Redditing it, fixing my computer, doing all these different things, it just does not handle 4K at all. It becomes very choppy and it's like a nightmare to edit on there. You can't you can't stand to look at the screen because it's so laggy. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, I gotta get Adobe Premiere uh, Pro. It's like, all right, so I got Adobe Premiere Pro and then I started editing on that software. I'm not nearly as fast at editing on that software and that's just because I'm not used to using it. But honestly, I don't think I'll ever become as fast as I am on editing on that platform as I am on editing on the current platform that I use, right? So I was like, all right, this is taking forever. It took me like all day to edit. And then I was done editing and it was time to render the video. Well, jeepers, creepers, now guess what? Rather than taking 20, maybe 30 minutes to render, it took an hour and a half to render. It's like, hour and a half to render? Are you kidding me? This is crazy. When I finally finished rendering the video, the 30, I think it was 38 minutes long, 38 minute video was 45 gigabytes. It was monstrous. And I was like, okay, well, what about uploading to YouTube? I upload it to YouTube. Usually I can upload my videos like 20, 30 minutes maybe, right? Up uploading, processing up to HD. That took three hours, three hours. I've got gigabyte internet with ethernet connection, three hours. It's like blowing away. So then I was like, oh, okay, well, how can I improve this? There's nothing I can do to improve my internet speed. I've got the fastest internet speed that my internet provider can, can provide. So okay, what if I phone Memory Express and talk about getting a computer mate or add more memory to my computer? So my computer's got a really good processor and it's got 16 gigs of RAM. And I asked her, okay, well, what if I up my RAM to 32 gigs? He's like, it's not going to do anything because it's using your CPU. It's using your processor or your graphics card. So you need to build a new computer with a better graphics card and a better, 
a better processor and that's going to cost you about three grand for a really good one it's like three grand are you kidding me that's crazy just to like save a bit of time on rendering holy toledo so now i've taken this process of editing uh rendering and uploading and i've extended it from like an hour and a half two hours every day to like six hours and it's maybe even more than that six like it's literally tripled in time so uploading and rendering a video in 4k literally takes three times as long than 1080p that is the experience that i've had maybe i'm doing something wrong but that's the experience that i've had so I'm gonna tell you right now that unfortunately, even when I get this new camera, I'm not willing to upload in 4K. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, don't worry about uploading in 4K, but I sort of wanna do it because for all the people watching in on like 4K monitors or 4K TVs, I sort of wanna have the 4K option there. But it's just not worth it to me because it takes way longer and I upload every day. If I upload it once a week, it's not a big deal. But I upload every day and I don't have six hours to sit there and watch this stuff render and edit and upload because sometimes it's eight or nine or 10 o'clock at night and I'm uploading the video for the next day. So I don't, I literally don't have time. I will literally not be able to sleep if I start uploading every day in 4K. So I, I just don't think it's gonna be an option for me. And it's funny because I was looking around and I was looking at Mr. Beast videos. So I was like, does Mr. Beast upload in 4K? No, he doesn't. It's 1080p, 60 frames per second, exact same quality that I use. One thing I will say though is the DJI camera, it presents the colors a lot better than my camcorder. Right now I'm using my phone, but it presents the colors a lot better than my camcorder. It's very similar to my uh, Sony ZV-1, but the uh, stabilization is way better. Like it's buttery smooth compared to my ZV-1. So even though I'm not willing to upload in 4K, when I start using that new camera, when it arrives, the colors and everything will present so much better because it's just got a way better sensor and I just feel like it ingests the colors of this room a lot better than a lot of my other cameras. So even though I'm not going to upload in 4K because it takes way too long to process and upload, the colors and the quality will go up just based on the footage that I actually shoot. So I'm excited about that. That's just my rant about 4K and why I'm officially not willing to upload in 4K because I don't have a strong enough computer and I don't have the time i literally don't have the time to upload every single day in 4k maybe if i uploaded once a week then i'd be able to do it but not when you upload as much as i do it's just not feasible so the kids are asleep and i just finished editing and uploading and now it's time to celebrate with a little drink in the evening and check it out Shazay, i'm assuming is going to be r2d2 although r2d2 is my mentor but i'm going to be drinking out of Vader. These are actually sick. Shows I got them for me for Christmas last year and I haven't even used them once. Rude. It's like a tiki mug. That is rude. These are sick. Rude. I just wanted to preserve. Nice, you know? Yeah, I wanted to preserve them, you know? They're they're beautiful. <laughs> what do you think of this maneuver? We got our favorite TV show, well, at least my favorite TV show, right? And then <laughs> those are just going to sit right about there. <laughs> my container of cookies became a cat so i'm actually back in the lego room late at night here and i'm just sort of mapping things out for tomorrow now tomorrow i'm going to be dealing with all the traffic lights in the city i came up with this pretty cool design they're all just sitting here i think one thing that's been holding me back in regards to that is coming up with the street names like we're just allocating these street names to the streets so I'll be taking care of that tomorrow, which is pretty cool. So all my intersections are going to be controlled. Pretty excited about that. I was also thinking to myself, the race platform up there. The interesting thing about it is that it's actually built on 48 by 48 stud base plates. So it's 15 inches deep. And that actually matches the depth of the Winter Village, right? I just finished building the Winter Village. I'm obviously not going to put the Winter Village up here right now, but it is an option. And if I were to do that, I would be able to move all of this medieval stuff where the Winter Village currently is. So essentially, I could just take that medieval stuff and I could plop it over here and I could put all this Winter Village stuff up there. Besides the giant ski slope, that will not fit up there. But Santa Claus's Mountain would for sure fit up there. Like this whole thing could go up there. 
Does it really make sense to have the medieval stuff in the Lego City? I think I've made it work. Does it make sense to have the Winter Village stuff in the Lego City? I think I could probably make that work as well, right? That is an option. If I wanted to bring some medieval stuff down here, it might be pretty cool. Like once winter's over, you know, I'm talking like February, March, April. That might be a pretty sweet change. Over the last couple of weeks, I've managed to crush out a bunch of different projects. Included in that is finishing the Boutique Hotel, also Central Park. And I created that cool modular building of the tuning workshop right back there and the Winter Village and whatever else. <laughs> I feel like I've got lots done. Same with like the, the parking lot, the whole city revamp and all that. But now I'm thinking, what am I going to do next? I want to create some sort of modular building. And as mentioned in a previous vlog, I want to create a hardware store. And during that vlog, I sort of said, ah, maybe it should be like a Home Depot, but I don't really want to use that brand. But then I was thinking to myself later on, and also tonight, I was like, I should build a Home Depot. I love Home Depot. Why wouldn't I build a Home Depot? That sort of makes sense. Just a miniature version of one, 32 by 32 studs, create the Home Depot text, right? Their like logo, have the orange awning. I think there's like a glass entrance with sliding doors on the side. One's the entrance, one's the exit. You could put like a shipping receiving door on the back and it could even go onto the access hole just like the tuning workshop one does. Like it'd be pretty easy to create. You know, you make a, a lumber aisle, a tool aisle, a uh, shovel and a uh, broom aisle, a garden center maybe, right? Like it'd be super easy to make, I feel. And I want to build a custom Home Depot. So that's going to be one of my next projects. However, with that said, I still have to add the interior details to the downtown city set which is uh going over top of the train station with that little uh, pedway so i got to do that and then i'll consider adding a home depot to my city just sort of like sitting down here late at night right now just trying to come up with some ideas for the lego city i'm really psyched on the home depot modular building right like who doesn't want a home depot you could do the same thing with like ikea just make a little 32 by 32 stud ikea just a little miniature version of it right it doesn't have to be massive you just build a small version that fits with the other modular buildings. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So lots of great ideas here for the Lego city and lots of different changes that I can make. Uh, I should be testing lighting. I really should get into light kits. Imagine if I could like turn all the lights down, dim them or turn them off and the entire city was lit up. That would be lit. Like that would be crazy. Maybe in my next place, I'll consider doing that. I'm not an electrician though, and I feel like that turns Lego into being an electrician, and I have no experience with that, so it'd be a tough nut to crack. Hey, you know what? We got lots done today. We brought the kids out. They hung out with Santa Claus, although they, although they didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> we checked out the pad wall, and we got the new boxes. I think those new boxes are a score. I finished the Winter Village. Jose helped me uh, build those or make those stickers, which was fantastic. Love when she can help me down here. It's it's pretty amazing. And yeah, just talked about the Lego City. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. I highly appreciate it. It's incredible. Thank you so much for the continued viewership. Those thumbs up go a long way as well. And thank you so much for subscribing. Have yourselves a fantastic day and farewell.